Today we're going to be taking a look at the Smart Things Multipurpose Sensor. I picked these up a few days ago with a plan to add them to my entrance doors as well as my garage door so I can integrate them with, with my MyQ Smart app. One of the main benefits of using multipurpose sensor is obviously for the open and close state, but it will also detect vibrations as well as temperature state, which should give you some pretty good options when you're looking to create automations. Before we get into the unboxing, which should be super quick, let's take a look at the sensor specs. It uses Zigbee as its main communication protocol. It has a range of 50 to 130 feet, but they do suggest if you are gonna be placing this in an area where the signal needs to go through walls and doors to place it within 30 feet of your hub. It has an operating temperature of 32 to 104 Fahrenheit, which is zero to 40 Celsius, and it uses a CR2450 battery. Judging by the specs, I'm gonna be pushing the limits of the sensor as my hub is actually in my basement which is more than 40 feet away from the sensor. And my garage sees temperatures as low as minus 20 Celsius. Now let's get into the unboxing. Here we're greeted with the user manual, which will give you the basic instructions on setting up and troubleshooting the sensor. Next, we have the safety and warranty guide. And here we have the star of the show, the SmartThings multipurpose sensor. My first impression of this sensor is the build quality. It seems top notch, just based off of weight and feel alone. And when I compare this to some other sensors I've used in the past, the magnetic pull is way stronger. Over on the back, you'll find that they've supplied us with a 3M sticker adhesive for mounting. In order to replace the battery, just slide the case off to the side. During my testing, I did find it a bit more challenging to remove the battery cover after it was mounted. Now that we've pulled the tag, you'll see that the red and green light is flashing, which means it is in pairing mode. Now we're gonna go into the SmartThings app and we're gonna set up the device. Open the app and press the plus sign, then press on device, then select brand and choose SmartThings. Then you'll select the multi-purpose sensor. Now choose your sensor. Now select your hub and then select the room that the sensor will be located in. Click next. And now it's going to try establishing a connection to your multipurpose sensor that's in pairing mode. Once it's done setting up, just give your multipurpose sensor a name to identify it and then click on done. Now I'm going to look for the garage door sensor that I just added and I'm going to go into it and show you some of the properties. The very first tile at the top is where it'll show you your open and close status. Just below it, you'll see the temperature tile and if you hit that little um, arrow pointing up just to the top right. It will give you a breakdown of the temperature throughout the day based on minute, hour, and day. For example, I have the minutes selected, so you'll see a breakdown of every 10 minutes. And when you click on the blue bars, it will give you the actual temperature that was at that period of time. And scrolling a bit further down, you'll see that the vibration sensor will tell you whether or not it senses vibration or not. Below you have the battery tile, which will show you the current battery state. As well, just below that, you'll have the activity history, which will give you a breakdown of what was happening throughout the day with this sensor. Now in this last part of the video, I'm gonna show you a couple of quick automations utilizing the features of this sensor. For the first demo, I'm gonna be creating a simple vibration automation. If someone knocks on a door, I will have it trigger a room light to turn on. Okay, so on the main screen here, just go up to the top right and hit the plus sign. And then we'll select the automation button. Add a condition if, and add the conditions that will activate this automation. So just hit the plus sign. And for this example, we'll click on device status. And then we'll scroll down for me, it's gonna be my sliding door. I'm gonna choose vibration sensor. And then at the bottom, you'll see, it gives you the option of vibration detected or no vibration. I'll choose vibration detected. And then I'll hit save. And if you wanted, you could add a bit more conditions here. So if you want to do it during a particular time of day, you would just hit the plus sign. Then you would select time. And then here you're going to be presented with a bunch of different options, specific time, period of time, any time. Just put in your criteria and then you hit save. I'm just going to leave it vanilla here. We'll hit next. And then it's asking us what we want to do. So I'm going to have it turn on a light based on vibration. So I'm gonna say control devices. 
Then I'm gonna look for my family room light. Click next. And here, if you click on it one more time, you see that you have the option of turning a light on or off. So I'll stick with on. You can have it delay the action. So if you wanna make it seem like when someone knocks on the door, that only after 30 seconds, the light turns on, all you'd need to do is put on delay action, 20 seconds. The auto turn off is now disabled. You can't adjust that. If you take off the delay action, you could set the light to then turn off based on a particular amount of time. Just cancel out of there. I'll hit save and then done. And we'll give it the automation name. I'm just gonna leave it to the default here. Hit okay. And now it's saved the automation. So let's test this out now. Pay close attention to the room on the left as when I knock, you'll see the light turn on. For the last demo, I'm not gonna go through the entire steps like I did with the last one, but the next automation will be based on the contact sensor opening during a specific period of time. Once I open my front door, I have it set to turn off my front outside light. So this is where I'm gonna end the video today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this something you could see yourself using? Do you have any unique ideas on sensor automations? Because I would love to hear about them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.